Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. I just put out my Ask Me Anything video in celebration of 2,000 subscribers. And you guys posed your questions to me, so tonight I'm going to answer them. So let us begin. So this first question comes from my buddy over at Watching James. He has his own YouTube channel and it's amazing. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. And I have to give him a huge shout out and thank you for being such a great supporter of this channel. His question is, I would like to know your thoughts on what might be the best vintage, mechanical, affordable, rectangle or tank style watch. I feel like it would round out my vintage collection. This is a great question. I've only encountered a few tank style watches in person, so those are really the only ones that I could speak to. So let me go over those now. I own a couple of the $20 Seiko Quartz tank watches, and those are pretty brilliant pieces, especially for their price. They're on the smaller side, they're nice and slim, the case design is just amazing. And for 20 bucks, that's a perfect entry level tank style watch, especially if you're not sure what you're gonna think of them. So you could get one of these, try it out, see if you like it, and if you do, you can upgrade to something else. I also own a couple of vintage Hamilton watches. One of them is square, and the other one is a tank style watch from the 80s that kind of looks like it's from the 1930s. Both of these watches are absolutely brilliant. So I would think that going with a vintage Hamilton tank style watch would be a pretty safe bet. If the others are anything like these, they're amazing. And the prices on them aren't too bad either. You're looking at somewhere around $1 to $200. However, if you don't mind homages, I think my suggestion would be to go with one of the Satina watches. They look so much like a Cartier tank that people actually used to redial them and sell them as fakes. They have an ETA mechanical movement in them, so they're hand winding, which would meet your mechanical requirement. They aren't huge, but yet they aren't super tiny, so I feel like these might be a good choice for you, unless you don't want an homage tank watch. And they're pretty affordable too. Question number two comes from J. Duke Enski. Jadukensky? Something like that. And the question is, what kind of media are you into? Any particular non-watch things you particularly enjoy? Music, books, movies, shows, etc. Also, Darkstar7742 asked, what besides watches are your other hobbies? So I've kind of lumped these two together since they're a little bit similar, and this is going to be a long video. In fact, I had to take notes because the answer is so long. So I'll start at a high level. For movies, I love horror movies. That's my favorite genre. And that's followed by sci-fi. I don't think I have a favorite horror movie. Oh, maybe American Mary. I love that movie. And that's probably likely due to Catherine Isabel in there. I love the Evil Dead franchise, and I'm super stoked for the new movie. I love the first Saw, the first Hellraiser, and I love all of the cheesy holiday horror movies like Thanks Killing and whatnot. For sci-fi, Aliens is my favorite franchise, minus the fourth movie, of course. The new Dune is still blowing my mind, and I can't wait to see the second half. And I do like the original one as well. I love both the Blade Runners. Haha. <laughs> I love both the Blade Runners. Event Horizon, The Thing, 2001 A Space Odyssey, 12 Monkeys, and I love me some Disney's The Black Hole. But for movies and shows that have actually changed my life, I would have to say Mad Men. That is pretty much solely responsible for shifting my watch collecting into dress watches and vintage watches. Same with Bad Times at the El Royale. I've seen that movie so many times. As well as The Apartment, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and all of the Bond movies. As for music, I've always been into dark, hard music. For a while I was making Gabber Techno, 
and played a few huge shows. I played one show on Mount Hood in Oregon. It was an overnight rave, and my wife, who was pregnant at the time, and I had to sleep in the back of a rider truck. That was good times. I've also played an illegal rave in Canada in a public park, and the cops came sometime around 3 or 4 in the morning, but after they left, the party continued until about 8 or 9. I would have to say that my favorite genre of all, though, is actually neurofunk. I could listen to that every day and just not get tired of it. Of course, I love vintage jazz and stuff like that, but I feel like drum and bass is kind of my go-to. And prior to starting this channel, I attempted to make some. I've been kind of dabbling with making music ever since, man, like 1990 or something. But when I started this channel, I figured I would make some lo-fi hip-hop for some of the B-roll footage and whatnot. And I realized that I actually really like making that genre of music. It's the only genre that's actually cathartic to do. So on the weekends, that's how I unwind after a week full of uh, creating YouTube videos and whatnot, stressing about topics and scripting things out. I usually spend the weekend making lo-fi, trippy, weird hip-hop music. And you guys get to hear some of it in my intros and other things. For books, I pretty much like the same genre as movies. I just finished reading the Three Body Problem trilogy as well as the extra book. And that has to be the craziest hard sci-fi I've ever read. Those books are absolutely mind-blowing. I couldn't put them down. And currently I'm actually reading through all of the James Bond books. I'm also trying my hand at writing some stories. They're basically me reliving vacations. However, the main characters are my wife and I as private investigators. So a little bit of Bond, a little bit of my vacations, a whole lot of fun. We'll see if I actually finish any of them. I also teach Kung Fu. I've been doing that for quite a while. And that happens to be the side hustle that helps to pay for all my watches. Question number three comes from Obese Tuna 3164 And Obese has been a viewer of this channel for some time and an avid commenter. I always look forward to seeing what kind of comments he leaves. And his question is, what part of the US do you call home? And do you suffer from watch angst? By angst, I mean deciding exactly which watch to wear. I know that on the great big scale of things, this is a first world kind of problem but it really pisses me off. Yeah, so I've spent my whole life living in the Pacific Northwest, so I am on the West Coast and I'm um, neighbors to Canada. And that second question is a great one. As you guys know, I have a pretty sizable collection. So the upside is I get to experience a whole lot of different watches. The downside is I don't really get that in-depth relationship with any of my watches. But I can definitely relate to watch angst. However, recently I've kind of been cycling through different moods. So right now I'm in kind of a sporty mood, which is interesting. So I've been wearing my Armida quite a bit and my Smith's Everest Gilt Dial. However, prior to that, I was really stoked on the Movado Museum and the new Dolce Vita, as well as my new Seiko Dolce. So I just kind of cycle through different watches depending on my mood. What I've been doing lately is I'll have two or three pieces that I have sitting out on the shelf. And those are the ones that I'm in the mood to wear most often. So I see them there because once I see a watch, I want to wear it. So once I start digging through my watch boxes, that becomes a problem. Those are days where I end up wearing four or five watches for like an hour or so because I'm stoked on all of them. But yeah, so far I think the shelf idea has been working pretty well. The next question comes from Richard Anoka 801 and his question is, any preliminary thoughts on the Christopher Ward The 12 release? And I'm surprised that my brother actually hasn't asked me for my thoughts on this. Usually anytime there's a new Christopher Ward release, he'll text me and ask me what I think of it. I love me some Christopher Ward, even though at the moment I don't own any. At one point, I owned three of them. The Malvern 595, which was a brilliant dress watch. 
and I wish they still produced those. They're such great watches. However, it was a bit large for me, and so I ended up parting ways with that. I also owned the Sandhurst, and that was just gorgeous. However, when I got the Smith's PRS 29A, it felt a little bit redundant, and being larger, I decided to keep the Smith's. And I also owned a C65 Trident, and again, just brilliant. Their case design is just phenomenal. But that one I ended up letting go of for the Baltic Aquascaf. So I still really love the brand. They're just a little bit large and sporty for me. However, I think they did put out some 36s, so, hmm. So I'm going to have to refer to my notes because I had to go and check those watches out and some of my initial thoughts. From what I'm seeing, the 12 looks pretty amazing. Those dials are crazy. I think my only thoughts on them really are, I wonder if the dial might be too much. I would have to see it in person, but I feel like maybe a sunburst variant of these would be nice. So you kind of have an option of a little bit more minimal or more textured when it comes to the dial. I would love to see these in 37 or 38 millimeters with a no date option, but that's just me. But yeah, from what I see, they look pretty amazing. And I think it was their Sealanders that they had come out with fairly recently. Those look pretty great also. I think my brother was kind of tripping on those. I don't think he purchased one though. But yeah, every Christopher Ward I've seen in person is just brilliant. Solid, fairly affordable for what you get too. The next question comes from NAN by Zero, who's another avid commenter. And his question is, how late is it right now? Well, according to my A17, it is 12.14. However, by the time I'm done recording all of this and doing what editing I can, it's probably going to be about 3 in the morning. The next question comes from Tobias Rottenbach, 1769. And he sends his greetings from Germany, which is awesome. And his question is, do you like to do and or watch sports? And that's a great question. I played sports in elementary school, but in middle school and high school, I was a skater and a weirdo, and it was usually the sports kids who gave me the most grief. So I kind of shunned sports altogether. However, a few years ago, my wife decided to become obsessed with football, and that would be American football. And now she's like a super genius when it comes to that sport. She follows all the drafts. She knows who in the background behind the scenes is getting fired and hired. She has all the strategies for building teams down. Her and my brother-in-law, who's also obsessed, can sit there and talk for hours about the sport. So for the past few years, I've been watching a lot of football. And now I kind of understand some of the strategies on the field and whatnot. And it's super fun to watch. I really like rugby, but I don't catch it very often. Every now and then I'll watch entire games on YouTube. I should do that more often. I feel like I like rugby more than football even. So yeah, later on in life I kind of became a sports fan-ish. And the final question came in just today from my buddy over at Illuminating Watches. And he is so amazing. Trust me, if you haven't seen his channel before, you have to go over there. He is a genius at digging and digging and digging, and he does really in-depth videos discussing different watch models from the past, usually digital watches and whatnot. Just a phenomenal and super entertaining channel. And his question was, what are my top three digital watches? And this one was kind of a tough one. I had to ponder it a bit and do a little bit of poking around online. So as far as digital watches that I personally own, I feel like my top three are these. The Casio A700 definitely wins. This watch is just absolutely phenomenal. It's a bit thinner than what you get with an F91. The colorway on this looks amazing, and the Milanese strap really gives it a unique look. And it was this watch that was beeping earlier. The next one would be my Nixon, just because it is so utilitarian. This is a ladies variant, so it's actually 
kind of a normal size. The men's variant is huge, but it's so wearable and the battery lasts so long that I think this would be my second choice. Even though my third choice looks so cool. It totally reminds me of Robotech, like something you would see on a character in that show. It's pretty large though. And right now the battery is low, so it's not showing the wave table on there. Usually it'll show a tide table up there. So I'm gonna have to uh, take the case back off here and swap this battery out. But that green on there looks so cool. As for digital watches that I haven't yet experienced in person, I really like the driving watches where the face is pointed at you from this side here, not the top. Kind of like the ones that Bulova has recently put out. I would really like to see one of those in person. Those look pretty crazy and fun. And I recently encountered a really unique one that I kind of like, even though it's odd looking. And that would be the Void watches. It looks like a weird belt buckle or something. And the strap attaches to the huge loops on the top and the bottom. It just looks kind of cool. I saw a brushed metal one in like a gray. And yeah, it, I kind of like it, even though it's really weird. So there you have it, the 2,000 subscribers ask me anything answers. Thanks for watching.